Hey, what's happening, my fearless networking friends? Todd Falcone, what is going on? Welcome back to another episode, a fun one today. How do you lead with the business? How do you lead with the business? First of all, uh, one thing I think is beautiful, I think it's an amazing thing that takes place right now in, in our environment that we're in in network marketing, there's a lot of focus on customer acquisition. Uh, across the board, I see a lot of people in our profession, company, companies and countries, and, and people are focused on getting customers, which is the way it should be, right? Uh, you have a product, you have a service, and you represent that brand, and your job, one of your jobs, is to get that product or service in the hands of end users that have nothing to do with the compensation plan. That's really where the true residual comes from, from customers, right? And I, look, I've seen trends in the business where it's business, business only, biz up, biz up, biz up, and then I think in the environment we're in now, I see a lot of very customer-centric uh, companies, which I think is beautiful. I certainly don't want to change that. But one thing I, wa I want to say is if, you, if you've got an amazing product, and in, in fact, in some cases, and I've used this reference, I've referenced this many times, sometimes if you've got a product that gets really great results for people, like they take it and they get results, that, and it's obviously a good thing, right? They've got a product that's got a strength, it be, your greatest strength, the product, the fact that it gets great results, that it works actually, can become your greatest weakness because then ultimately it can become, it's so easy to put people on the customers that you forget about talking about the business. Which I think, and which, by the way, this happens all the time, I think if the product is that good and it's getting those kind of results, why wouldn't you want to do everything in your power to multiply the sheer numbers of people that ultimately get on the product and the way that's done is by building, of course, a distribution network, as big of a distribution network as possible of the independent distributors, representatives, affiliates, whatever it's called in your company. And because you're growing a bigger distributorship and you've got a product that creates such great results, now you've got, you've multiplied by large numbers the, the amount of, ultimate, ultimately, the amount of people that are, are on your products, which is going to, you know, create a bigger impact. It's going to be way more volume. It's going to certainly impact your check. So everything about that's good, right? So this question came up recently from one of my clients. Is like, how do I lead with the business? Well, my simple answer is lead with the business question, right? It's one thing, I mean, if you're opening up and saying, I've got this product and sharing your product, which is great. Uh, but, and, I'm, and I wouldn't, I would say this, if, if, if you have a particular process or system and your process or system is lead with the product, product first, I, I don't want to take you off of that. Like you should, you should, because then you're going to be swimming upstream rather than doing what, especially if it's working, you don't want to be going against the grain. So, but to me, it's the, the simple answer again is leading with a, uh, with a peak interest or a business peak interest question, right? And like, I mean, there, there are many, but there's a lot of, I'm sure there's probably a multitude of different ways that you can express or open a conversation about business. One of my favorite lead-in business building questions would be, do you at all keep your options open in terms of making money outside of what you're currently doing? That is clearly a business-focused peak interest question. Secondly, if you're going to lead with the business, whatever you put that person in front of after asking them that question or any other lead-in question that's focused on the business, the information that you're putting the person in front of can't just be product focused. It needs to be a presentation that outlines whatever opportunity it is that you're involved in. They need to see the whole story, right? Because the thing is, if you lead with the product, the business does not have to be part of that conversation. I mean, I think it should be. At the very least, you should suggest it. But if you're leading with a product, it could just be, I mean, this is just a customer. There's no business conversation at all. I mean, you could, you know, not even talk about the business, which many people do. I think it's a mistake, but many people don't because it's like they're, you know, they have a, a fear or hesitancy towards bringing up the business. But I mean, you're doing business with the person by retailing them a product. Why wouldn't you want to let them know? It's like, hey, you know what? You, you can get paid by referring this product to other people, right? So if you're leading with the product, 
the business doesn't have to be part of the conversation. If you're leading with the business, the business has to be part of the conversation. And because the business is about moving that particular product or service, the product has to be part of that conversation. You can't go send somebody to a business opportunity presenta presentation, talk about making money and profits and working for yourself, but then the product's not included in there. It has to be part of it. Like the only reason you have a business is because you have a product that gets results or a service that gets results for people where there's value in it. So the simple way, and this doesn't have to be hard, which is, thank God, you know, I mean, I don't like things that are hard, that are challenging. It doesn't have to be hard. If you want to learn to lead with the business, you lead with the business. You lead with a business peak interest question. You lead with a an opening that would cause somebody to have curiosity about making money or working for themselves or being self-employed or all, any or all of the above. And that would not be a product only peak it like, hey, I've got this product, you know, it, it would be it would be a business focused question. And I'm not saying you have to use do you at all keep your options open in terms of making money outside of what you're currently doing, although it's a great question. Uh, but it does need to be a question. Number one, let me just make this simple. Number one it needs to be a question that's focused on business. Number two, the information that you're guiding them to after they say yes to that question needs to disseminate information about the business. And of course, the product or service would have to fit into that equation. So yeah, I, can't, I can't go ask you a peak interest question about business making money from home and then send you over to a, a product demo only. I mean, that's, you know, there's a mismatch there because we're talking business and now you're just talking about this product. There's going to definitely be a mismatch. So whatever you're directing them to has to be something where they understand what the business is and how they might fit into the picture if they decided to participate. So that's the, that's the second part of that equation. It's only two, number one, it's leading with a business question. Number two, it's getting them in front of something that's going to describe or define the business or lay out the business in front of them, which would of course include the products or services. And then three, I guess, would you, would be you knowing what's on the back end if they decide to say yes, in terms of how do I get started? What are the different options that are available? Of course, like most of you guys have different options for starting in the business and that would enable you to be able to, you know, lay out the different details that are, or the options that are available in getting started with whatever company it is that you're involved in. So again, in finishing up this fairly short episode, it's all about the lead in. And I mean, the title, okay, how, how to lead with the business. Well, how do I lead with the business? Um, lead with the business. Lead with the business peak interest question. Lead with something that creates curiosity around earning money, working for yourself, working from home, being self-employed, uh, doing your own thing, having a side hustle, whatever it might be. Not just product. And then secondly, getting them in front of something that's business focused. It's as simple as that. Okay? All right. If you're on my podcast, listen to me on audio. Thank you. Appreciate it. Please do rate the podcast. I'd appreciate that. Uh, if you're on YouTube, what's up, YouTubers? How you guys doing? Uh, appreciate you as well. I'd love to hear from you. Come on over to my page. It's where the conversation takes place. ToddFalcone.com. And for this episode, it's ToddFalcone.com forward slash episode 107. ToddFalcone.com forward slash episode 107. Appreciate you guys for plugging in. I will see you on another episode. Have an amazing day.